Welcome back on the road with Doc Pritchett. Uh, we have an announcement we need to make, okay. and then we'll get right into the program. Okay. Red Clay School District is sponsoring their sixth annual college fair. So this is the Red Clay School District, their sixth annual Red Clay College Fair, and it will be held at John Dickinson High School. And that high school is located 1801 Milltown Road, and uh, it will start at from 6.30 to 8.30. So it is free and open to the public. Uh, they will have their college admission counselors. So if you're interested in uh, finding out more information about financial aid, about scholarships, about the SAT, uh, please take time to come out on uh, the 12th, that's a Thursday, this coming Thursday, March 12th, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. And if you have any questions, you may call 552-3700. Uh, that's 552-3700. So those of you who are juniors, uh, freshmen, uh, those in college, those uh, who are seniors, just in high school, and parents, please come out to the Red Clay uh, College Fair. This is our sixth annual college fair, which will be held at um, John Dickinson High School. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Welcome, guys, to the show. Thank, thank you for having me. So us. happy that uh, you are here. Mm -hmm. I will say this, you guys are the most active young men <laughs> I have witnessed in many, many years. Thank you, sir. And, I'm, and I'm proud of you, thank you. for uh, what you're doing. And you know, the thing that impresses me with both of you is that you know you guys just don't talk it; you're doers, and you're out there making this community a better place. Thank you. And so, working with the youth, as um, as you said, it's easy for you guys because you relate, mm -hmm. and that's the key. Definitely. So, uh, with that in mind, I want you to tell us a little bit about the uh, United. United Way Youth uh, programs that you're doing. Okay, great. Um, so yes, my name is Oren White and I'm the uh, Youth Engagement Coordinator at United Way of Delaware. Yes. And uh, one of the biggest things that our CEO Michelle Taylor wanted to do was truly make an impact on our youth. Uh, they are truly our future and if we're hoping to make the changes that we want to make here in the city of Wilmington and in the state of Delaware abroad, we have to start with the next generation. Um, when I was brought on, we really didn't have a youth engagement department. We really didn't offer too many direct services through United Way, so this was trailblazing of sorts. So we knew okay. that there were going to be more failures and successes early on, but we were not deterred. Uh, one of the biggest things that we did is we realized that the only way that we can reach youth is if we bring youth to the table. Mm -hmm. If we're making sure that we're keeping them present in every facet of our work, if we're making sure that we're not talking for them, we're talking with them, mm -hmm. we feel as though we'll be very, very successful. And that's a nod to uh, Keith James being a big part of the work that we're doing at United Way of Delaware. But with the Youth Advisory Council in particular, uh, we see a lot of gains there. Um, we're able to design the work that we do and meets once a month. And uh, typically, we're at United Way of Delaware's boardroom. Um, we're located at 625 North Orange Street in the mm -hmm. Linden Building on the third floor. Mm -hmm. And we gather with a lot of youth from the inner city and the community. And what we try not to do is exclude anyone. Uh, we have the privilege of being one of the two United Ways in our network that services our entire state, us in Rhode Island. So we want to make sure that all of the youth serving organizations that are serving youth here in the state of Delaware have access to the resources that we're making available. Uh, so what we do is we take advantage of the technology at our fingertips. Oh, okay. uh, we try to Skype in groups from downstate to particularly be a part of our meeting so that mm -hmm. we can ensure that if you're in Sussex County or if you're in Kent County, mm -hmm. you have access to the services that are being provided here in Newcastle County. And we're not against traveling at all either. Um, and we've seen a lot of gains there. Um, we probably have between 60 to 100 youth that we contact monthly about our meetings, about Beautiful. our gatherings. Yes. Uh, we've been meeting consistently every month since October. And what we've been attempting to do is couple each youth advisory council meeting with the community service project because we have to teach our youth early that no one is going to come in and rescue our communities. It starts with us. Absolutely. And if we teach them at a young age that is not only important to take, but it's twice mm -hmm. as important to give, mm -hmm. we'll begin to see the change that we truly want to see. So I, I don't want to uh, take up too much of the time. I'll definitely let Keith give you guys some more background information about the Youth Advisory Council. But like I said, we meet once a month. Uh, we come together at United Way of Delaware's boardrooms, and now we've been meeting at the uh, Wilmington Public Library due to some space constraints in our boardroom. We have a lot of organizations that use that space on the weekends as well. And we've been able to see a lot of great turnouts. And one of the biggest things that we're integrating into the work that we do through the Youth Advisory Council are the 40 developmental assets, as United Way of Delaware is a big proponent of the IM40 movement. So that's a little bit of information. I'll let Keith tell you a little bit more about the council. Okay, well, 
welcome, Keith. How, how you doing? Thank you for having us again. My name is Keith James. I'm the Youth Engagement Assistant for United Way of Delaware. And um, as Oren was saying, we, uh, we try to tie in our 40 developmental assets into all the work that we do with our Youth Advisory Council. Um, the 40 developmental assets were founded by the Search Institute, and um, the studies show that the more assets a youth between the ages of 12 and 15 have prevalent in their life, the more likely they are for academic success, the more likely they are for, uh, to live a healthier lifestyle, and the least likely they are to engage in risky behavior. So throughout our, pro, uh, throughout our sessions that we have with our youth, um, we'll have like an icebreaker. And the icebreaker may gain uh, three to four assets um, just doing that icebreaker. So the last one we did uh, the yarn toss, the yarn toss or the, uh, what is it, the web of connectivity. Yes. And so pretty much what we were doing is we were just figuring out who our superhero was. Uh, some people said their mom, some people said God, some people, you know, had Superman as their hero. And they were just talking about all the reasons why that made him their hero. And as we were tossing the ball, we were seeing how we were all connected because we all had that asset in our life, mm -hmm. uh, an adult or a parent role model in our life who, you know, helped us stay on track. And so that's just one of uh, many ways that we tie in the assets. <coughs> uh, another way that we tie in our assets is through our life map experience. Um, and the life map experience has been and, you know, just an excellent program that I was blessed to be a part of, and that's actually how um, myself and Oren met. Yeah. Um, in the summer of 2014, I helped him with, uh, in a group of five other interns from United Way of Delaware, mm -hmm. and we took 200 youth from the city of Wilmington, and they went through what we call the life map experience. Mm -hmm. And through that, they were able to identify their adversity. They were able to look at their life, not just, you know, from the position that they've been. Actually, what do you want to be in life? You know, your mm -hmm. dreams. If money didn't matter, there was no positions, no roles, anything, what would you be doing right now? And we found out that the youth from the city of Wilmington, they want to be doctors, they want to be lawyers, some of them wanted to be astronauts. Um, one of our interns actually, uh, he said he wants to intern for NASA. Mm -hmm. So th these dreams that we, we, we saw that they had, now we help them identify the assets to help them get there. And how did we do that? We looked at the adversity that they went through before, and we looked at the assets that they had in their life during that adversity that helped them overcome that. And for my story in particular, it was something that I didn't uh, recognize when I was going through the adversity that I had the assets and we found that was the case for a lot of our youth so when we saw the assets we saw then you know the youth were actually talking to each other more connecting with each other more and then now they're uh, starting to come into United Way of Delaware and other youth serving organizations and volunteering so that's just definitely been a, a great experience the life map and the 40 assets have you know is definitely a life-changing thing mm -hmm. wow. yeah. how, how long <laughs> do you uh, or the meetings or the sessions uh, one thing that we've integrated now in the year 2015, we've got a few youth advisory council meetings under our belt, but the one thing that we do not want to leave out while we're engaging those youth are engaging their parents and their guardians. So typically the uh, youth advisory council meeting lasts from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. But what we've done is we've integrated an extra hour into the engagement from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. We offer breakfast to the youth that are reoccurring council members that come in, but that's also a time for parents and guardians that want to come out and say, okay, what are you teaching my kid? What kind of information are you giving out to our youth? How are you, you know, bolstering them? Yeah. We can have those conversations with the youth to kind of get a snapshot of what the week looks like for that child because you may have a child that's coming in that's struggling that may have an already of a disposition and we want to make sure that our staff are fully equipped to be able to deal with the consistent changes that are occurring in our youth as they begin to mature. So having that constant contact with the parents is very important and it allows us to be just as consistent and determined in our work because if the parents are aware of what we're trying to hammer in during the Youth Advisory Council, they can take those same lessons and stretch them out mm -hmm. during the week. So we've seen a lot of progress with that additional <coughs> add of, of, of the hour to our Youth Advisory Council member. And it's also an opportunity for adults that are looking to get engaged and say, hey, I want a mentor, hey, I want to give some of my time. Mm -hmm. We can bring those adults in so that the parents can meet these individuals that are looking to get to know their youth. So mm -hmm. it just creates a lot more transparency and that's always what you want to do when you're in youth engagement. You want to be mm -hmm. as transparent as possible. Very good. I, I like the fact that you have the opportunity to Skype you know, so mm. that it's not worrying about uh, someone having to be transported all the time. Correct. Mm. But the opportunity that they can Skype in. And then also the fact that you give the young people a chance to talk, because I think mm. that's what has happened over the years, mm -hmm. that um, they have, had not, have not had a chance to, uh, to talk and to explain some of the things that they're experiencing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some of their frustrations. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they just need a, a listening ear. So to know that there's a resource in the community yeah. that right. they can go to and willing to sit and listen to them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it is, is greatly beneficial. Yes. So yes, we definitely will be making some referrals. Definitely, uh, definitely appreciate that. Yeah, and you. in fact, you were talking about the um, 
young person in, interested in NASA and the young lady Angela Mason yeah, who cousin. just got a big promotion with NASA she works in Greenbelt Maryland, Maryland. so she okay. would okay. love to come Great. and uh, speak because <coughs> she's from Wilmington she went to Bancroft okay, okay. And we've had her on her uh, a show and she d d designs and I won't the go into, she's spaceship. an engineer yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for NASA mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and might even be able to set up some tours down yeah. there to Greenbelt, Maryland. We, we went down to see her. That would be excellent. Yeah. And, Mar yeah. and Marcelo is up. actually, uh, who is also a part of our youth engagement department, mm -hmm. uh, who, who he always talks about, you know, the youth just needing that, you know, somebody to listen, somebody to give them that intention that they need. Mm -hmm. And it's not to, you know, uh, you know, baby anybody or, you know, feel pity, but to where we can actually listen to the problems that are going on in our community. Um, one thing that we found out through the Life Map experience is youth are going through things that you wouldn't expect a normal 16-year-old to go through. Mm -hmm. But then again, what is normal when our world is constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. so, so when we look at, you know, Know, the conversations that we're having with our youth, uh, we definitely want to make sure that they have the proper resources and the things that they need so we're not just opening up scab wounds mm -hmm. and just leaving it there to get infected. We're making sure that we're following up and we're having that continuous engagement. Um, and I think I can speak for myself and Norman. We say we're doing this type of work and, you know, these programs because this is the things that we wanted for us when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people did have those one-off conversations with us and we felt special for the moment, but then after time and nobody coming around again, it hurts. So that's the one thing we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we're committed to our communities, not just Wilmington, but to the state of Delaware to make sure that oh, we're okay. engaging all youth throughout our state um, on that continuous engagement. Yeah. So I hope our parents are listening. <coughs> if you have a young person at home that um, seems to be struggling or, or is challenged, then it's important that you get your young person involved with this, uh, this youth engagement mm -hmm. uh, program sponsored by United Way. Now, okay. I know you have something coming up special tomorrow evening. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow uh, at the uh, Chase Center will be the Imagine Delaware Educational Expo and Forum. Um, that's going to be taking place, like I said, at the Chase Center on the yeah. riverfront from right. 4 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting a very large crowd to be out there tomorrow. We're expecting anywhere from a 700 to maybe 1,000 mm -hmm. attendees. And pretty much what is going to kick off at 4 p.m. with our Educational Expo, we are pleased to welcome 50 organizations from the, from the city of Wilmington and the state of Delaware abroad that all are pivotal members of the youth engagement in the educational space. Really what we're attempting to do tomorrow are to find solutions to how we improve education and youth engagement in this area. You know what I mean? And not one organization or one person has the answer. It's literally going to take us coming together from all sectors, from all areas, to be able to say these are the ways that we can be able to make sure that we're giving our youth the best opportunity to succeed. And from a United Way of Delaware standpoint, that's what our youth engagement department is reminiscent of. It really doesn't matter about my gain, it doesn't matter about Keith's gain, it's all about from the youth that we affect, mm -hmm. how successful are they going to be? From the time that I've had the, the opportunity to impact them, how much have I helped them get to the success that they desire for themselves? And I think that's a big caveat in the part of the conversation tomorrow. So as I said, from 4 to 6 p.m. we're going to be having an educational, uh, educational expo. We're going to invite everyone to come out to that. There's going to be over 50 organizations that are going to be there presenting um, information about the work that they're doing in the community and then immediately following there's going to be an address by Governor Jack Markell. We're going to have Dave Leffer from the News Journal who's going to be moderating a panelist discussion of youth engagers, educators, parents is going to be in a very eclectic group of individuals that are going to be sharing information about the solutions that we're pretty much looking for. And this is not going to be a one-off thing. From a United Way of Delaware standpoint we're going to be definitely making the attempt to get in contact with these individuals that come out because we don't want them to just come to the event and hear the solutions we want them to be a part of the solutions mm -hmm. so we're going to make it our business to contact them the following business day on the 10th to say hey mm -hmm. you said you're interested in early reading you said you're interested in mentoring you said you're interested in college and career readiness here's how we can align you with programs and, and, and opportunities that we're offering through the United Way of Delaware Lens so that you can get involved immediately and begin contributing to the change that you want to see mm -hmm. so um, definitely we welcome everyone to come down like I said Chase Center 4 to 8 30 p.m. it's going to be a great time definitely mm -hmm. And so they don't have to pre-register or anything? Just yes, there is, a, there is a pre registration but we will have registration on site, so we encourage everyone to come out. If, in fact, you do not get the opportunity to register online, please feel free to come on out. No one will be turned away. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's wonderful. That's you know, the wonderful. thing I really, that impresses me, we hear so much about parent involvement. Mm -hmm. Now we turn around, we're talking about youth involvement. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the buzzword mm -hmm. because students, Young people need an opportunity not to be talked to, mm -hmm. but to be able to share 
their thoughts to let people see, let them see mm -hmm. that what they have to offer is worthwhile. Of course. And a lot of times they don't get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you keep <coughs> talking about this youth involvement. I think that is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got to make it happen because that's what we need more of. Yes, right. sir. To give them an opportunity to tell mm -hmm. what they think. Yes, sir. And I think just about a couple of weeks ago, one of the school districts were uh, they were talking about black history mm -hmm. and students who have excelled extremely well in school where they looked around, they were in the only black student mm -hmm. in those advanced classes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came out of it, uh, they interviewed and they were talking about they want to see more teachers that look like them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that article. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, that to me is like used to having an opportunity so somebody let them talk, yes, sir. and they were able to, to really say what they think. And it was a downstate school, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, I thought that was powerful that they were not punished mm -hmm. for the fact that they could say what they actually felt. Oh yes, sir. And that that really meant a lot to me when I read that article. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's interesting that you say you know giving youth a voice. Uh, United Way of Delaware, we recently sponsored two trips. Uh, to offer the community the opportunity to go out and see the movie Selma. We all know the 50-year uh, yes, anniversary yes, of Bloody Sunday yes, was yes. yesterday. His, yes, was yesterday. And um, for a lot of youth, they don't understand how pivotal a moment that was yes. in our history, not just mm -hmm. from a black perspective, but from an American perspective. Absolutely. That was a huge Absolutely. opportunity for the country to understand what the social climate was truly like mm -hmm. for, for African Americans here and minorities as a whole in America during that time. And what we did is uh, when the movie came out, we uh, were able to offer a private screening to a select 300 individuals from the community yes. they were able to take a look at this this piece this 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 work of art and then we were able to have a conversation and and really what we were attempting to do from a United Way of Delaware perspective is say what's going to be our modern day Selma you know what I mean what is what, how are we going to mobilize our communities how are we going to mobilize peaceful people in our areas to begin to say these are the things that's plaguing in our areas education being a huge but a hot button topic but there are many other areas that we have to begin to make improvements on if we want to be able to see the change that we desire to see in our community so not only did we have that community community conversation with adults, but we went back and we invited 300 youth to the movie theater, purchased their tickets for free and allowed them to come and see the movie and then we had a community conversation with the youth. And what they were able to see is that Martin Luther King was chosen at the age of I believe 25 or 26 when he was, you know, given the mantle to carry the civil rights movement. So you don't have to be, you know, well seasoned in your age to be able to make an impact. Mm -hmm. As soon as you know right from wrong, as soon as you see an injustice, you know, what Martin Luther King says, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to be on call at all times, you know, ensuring that we're not only keeping ourselves up to charge, but you're keeping your neighbor up to charge. And that's really what we encourage our Youth Advisory Council members to do, is to not only keep yourself in check, not only make sure that you have the assets that you need to succeed, but once you get to your success, you're helping someone else open that door as well. And, and then as you mentioned with the mentoring piece, I mean, giving that youth a voice that, you know, so they can uh, vent positively. I mean, I think youth have always, you know, tried to say what was on their mind and it came out in a negative way. And that's why mm -hmm. we have this perception that you shouldn't be in leadership roles yeah. or, you know, youth in the city of Wilmington are this one way or youth here. And you know what I mean? No one community is better than, uh, you know, another community. And Brian Gallagher said that, right. uh, president of United Way Worldwide. and. Mm -hmm. And that to me, you know, was something that, you know, I took in because, I, you know, I'm big on Wilmington. I, I love my city. Um, but when we're working with, you know, a large state and we have, you know, a number of different problems in different communities, we actually have to sit down and listen. And, and really that just is a big part of the solution to actually take the time to sit down and listen so we can have that authentic conversation. So then we can begin to take those steps forward, figuring out what our modern day summer is. Mm -hmm. and, and I just have to say to you, Mr. Pritchett, I mean, first, congratulations because you were honored at Dell Tech. Uh, for Black History Month and, and and that was amazing because the whole time you were speaking you you know you were talking about mentoring and you were talking about teamwork and, and when you were talking about teamwork you were talking about the people that opened doors for you and you know and and that was your whole speech and, and I told you afterwards that was humbling for me because it wasn't you know your typical me 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 speech you were talking about people that helped you get there you were talking about your mentors and you encouraged people to go out and you know mentor someone else and so I think that's you know something that we need to you know start working on you know collectively as a community 
community, whether you you know you're in youth engagement or you're an educator or you know you work at wherever. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It doesn't take you to have a special job or a title, youth engagement, anything for you to engage with your youth in your community. I think we need to be able to uh, get back to that way where we're able to you know talk to each other and uh, you know push each other to be better. Wow, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That is powerful. Very powerful. Very powerful. Wow. Yeah, I think with this uh, the movement, because you know we're in the educational reform movement, mm -hmm. and I think with uh, we're in high um, tests um, where we're very much concentrating on the test. Mm -hmm. That in our schools that we've become so focused on that that young people don't have a chance and an opportunity to to speak about some of the things that they're going through and and to talk. So it's good that they have this avenue and an opportunity to to talk. Because when you don't have a chance to talk, you become uh, frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to feel that, well, no one cares. Mm -hmm. And then when you become frustrated and feel no one cares, <coughs> then you develop that don't care attitude. Yeah. And then that's when we begin to see the problems mm -hmm. uh, that begin to um, appear in our community. Correct. And it's not that we have, uh, bad children. No. It's mm -hmm. just the fact that they have needs that need to be addressed. Yes. And uh, and the, the thing about it, as we work with children, we find that their needs are, are unique. Mm -hmm. So given an opportunity to talk, you can hear the different needs. And I like what you said, that once you hear the need, mm -hmm. then you just don't leave it. Mm -hmm. You begin to connect them to the resources yeah. that mm -hmm. are needed to begin to address and help the, uh, the young people. In the end, they begin to see how by speaking up and advocating for themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can begin to address a lot of the frustrations that they're experiencing. So parents, I encourage you to, uh, tomorrow is a good contact time. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's a good time from 4 to 8.30, you're yeah, going to be there? Yeah, 4 to 8.30 p.m. at the Chase Center on the road. Yeah, at the Chase Center, yeah. just to take your young person. If you find that they have a difficulty in school, or you find that they're being challenged, and you know teens go through uh, many changes anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a good time just to, to drop them off right down at the Chase Center. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you see the faces yeah. of these young people here, and they'll be glad to begin to give uh, assistance to you and, and direction and guidance, because mm -hmm. I'm certain with uh, those 50 organizations that are going to be there, yes. Uh, this is that's a once in a lifetime. Yeah, yes, definitely. yes, it definitely it is. Definitely is. Yeah. So, I think uh, to what Mr. Pritchett said, I mean, about that teamwork thing. You know, when and by no stretch of the imagination do we as two people have all the answers. Uh -huh. Yeah, and we don't have all the solutions. But you know, once we can start bringing people to the table, like these 50 organizations, and then yeah. starting to bring yeah. these 700 to a thousand people mm -hmm. out to the forum mm -hmm. tomorrow, mm -hmm. that's when we can actually sit down and start to have that conversation on how do we move forward. Not only how do we move forward, but who's going to push what. Mm -hmm. Who's be pushing education who's going to be pushing income who's going to be pushing right, health who's right. going to be pushing these key things that we need to address these problems in our community and i think that's really what uh we need to all see that it's not just going to take one group it's not going to be one person leading right. this it's going to be the city of wilmington that saves the city of wilmington it's going to be the state of delaware that saves the state of delaware not just one person or organization but we need people like you to that that uh to me we got to find a way to making sure that we're reaching out to you Mm -hmm. Because yes, when we have these meetings, you need to be there. Right. Yes, because, you know, you guys have mm -hmm. really mentored a lot of people. They're following you. You said you have them on Skype. Mm -hmm. You're doing a lot of things. So, you know, we need to have them around the table. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens when we don't have the youth involved, they only go by what they read in the paper. Somebody was shot. Yeah. This happened. Somebody invaded someone's home. Right. But basically, we don't want to put aside what you're doing, because mm -hmm. it's vital. Right. Mm -hmm. To me, it's vital, and I, I don't know what a lot of these organizations are doing daily for you, but I encourage them to, to get involved with your program, mm -hmm. because this is, this is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, anything that I can do, or we can do, nice. my wife and I, I want to do that for you. Much appreciated, sir. I mean, I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, we want to help you. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you coming on this evening. Thank you for having and, us. And uh, again, you and the audience, tomorrow, Chase Center, Imagine Delaware. I like that title. And uh, go down there from 4 to 8. 
4 to 8.30 p.m.? 4 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. And uh, stop in, right in your community. Yes, indeed. That's what's nice about it. And so we thank you for coming on, and I think that's... Yeah, outstanding job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Proud thank of both you. of you. I definitely Believe appreciate me. it. Oh, anytime. <laughs>